Welcome to Toffee TV. It is my three things from Arsenal to Everton 1 for the last time for the 23-24 season. The Blues beaten with a last-minute goal, contentious last-minute goal uh, to lose the game. But Everton went and dug out, dug in rather, put in a good, solid performance at the Emirates. We're up against the top-quality side and they've battled and scrapped. I'll be honest, I thought Arsenal could could put four or five past us today simply because I thought their intensity might be a bit too much for us. But it wasn't like that at all. And, and we'll end up, I'm end up I'm a little bit gutted. I shouldn't be. I'm, I mean, I think the thing, the goal for me absolutely shouldn't have stood. I think it's a terrible decision. I really do. I think once you're sent to the screen, I think it's an absolutely disgusting decision by Michael Oliver. And I think me personally, it's an agenda driven. I think his mates have been in his ear, his Newcastle mates have been in his ear too much that he can't referee us objectively anymore because that is a terrible decision. Uh, but I'm a bit gutted because we deserved, I think we deserved a draw based on the durability of us and how much we dug into. They did a better side, we know it. They could have scored goals. But listen, I'm not here to talk about Arsenal. They're the they're top quality side. They don't need me telling them how good they are. But for us... We dug in today, and that—that's really that's the first talking point. I think if you look at it, Sean Dykes, Ian Wong, Steve Stone, I think they've picked themselves up and dusted themselves down tremendously well since that Chelsea game. I'll be honest; I think if uh, the club would have been stable with with stability right at the very top, I'm not convinced Sean Dykes would still be here. During that 14 game run, I think on most clubs throughout, certainly in the Premier League, 14 games without a win, you're sacked. But, you know, we didn't, and, you know, he's rolled that out, and that's fine. I think he's done an excellent job since that Chelsea defeat, because that night it looked, it did look like we were all over the place. We were, it looked like we were banging trouble and with some tough, tough games to come. And, you know what? He went and done. An absolutely brilliant job to win those three home games in a week. Absolutely sensational to win those three home games in a week and to pick it up. You know, and that's the first thing. And that's why I'm gutted as well, because since then we've gone five games unbeaten and we've done such a good job today. And that's credit to the manager and the coaching staff, absolutely. And the players as well, you know, the players have took a bit of stick from people this season. I've said at different times this season, they are better than the showing. But they've, they've shown that in the last six weeks. Do we need new impetus, new footballers into this football club? Of course we do. We need some real pace on the break. We need someone who can put the ball in the back of the net from wide areas, not just talking about our strikers. We've done, you know, we've, we've ground out some big results in the last few weeks. And today we nearly got another good performance. It didn't matter in the context of the league. Of course it didn't. It didn't matter in the context of league placings. If we'd have ended 1-1, Brentford were, were spanked their own by Newcastle. But, you know, it, it would have been nice to finish the season six games unbeaten, wouldn't it? But listen, it's gone and, and that's the way it is. The hard work starts now. But I think what the manager has done is he's put a... They've put a, a, a level in place now and he can't fall below it. And the players can't fall below it. And it'll be tough because we're entering a period of... Still going to be instability, isn't it? Because until we actually get owners who come in and start setting the plan, getting some money into this football club, making everything better, then things are still up in the air. We've, we've, we don't know of those players today. We don't know who we're going to see again in an Everton ship. We'll know some, but there won't, there'll be lads who, who we won't see in a blue shirt again who'll move on. We may well end up losing Amadou Onana. We may end up losing Jarrod. Well, probably will end up losing Jarrod Brantwaite as well. More on that in a minute. But for the manager and the coaching staff to pick the lads back up, um, done a tremendous, tremendous job and deserve credit for that. So that's my first point. Uh, second point is the season. In term, sorry, not the season. Is the summer and the ownership. And it can't be ignored. We've just... You know, six games, last six games in Chelsea, like I've just said, the lads have put in big shifts. Uh, the only, I'd say the only time he really dropped the level was looting away. 
I think we we could have we could have raised it a bit and won there, but we didn't, and, and we didn't lose the game. Um, but they did they did fine, and they just had a big week and got the results. But now it all moves on to the ownership now, and this is this has gone on scandalously long. Farad Mashiri agreed has been trying to get investments into this club one way or the other. I don't know who he's gone and spoken to, but since January 2023, it's May 2024, triple seven. He decided to go with them in the September. This should have been brought to a halt in January or February time. The Premier League are at fault for, for that. Farad Mashiri's at fault for that. Absolutely he is. When, you know, when that decision was made, Sorry, when we got to January, you know, 12-week period and all that, he should have been given, they should have been given 30 days to come up with what they needed to. And then if they weren't at that point, it should have been cut then and we should have moved on. By hanging on, I know some people are saying, oh, he's played a blind, that he's done this, he's got someone else to fund it. It doesn't look like that. And what's gone on with them in the last week? It looks like the house of cards, doesn't it? It's come tumbling down. Um, and ironically... The Premier League might have ended up doing Everton a favour by not allowing this thing to go through. What we need now is an end to this. We need new owners coming in. Let's hope, you know, there's a couple floating round, a couple of different groups floating round who, if we got them in, could make a big difference to Everton. I think, I'll be honest with you, I even think Triple Seven could have made a difference in terms of a plan and following a plan. Because I don't think this club has had a clear plan. I really don't. For 25 years, under the, you know, Bill Kenwright ran it a certain way. It was effective because of David Moyes, but we still needed more. And eventually, when we did get that next step to more, the fella come in and didn't really want to get his hands dirty. He just wanted to throw money at it. And that hasn't worked. And we still had old thinking. What I'm saying now, I'm glad it isn't triple seven with what's gone on. But I think if we get a group in who comes in with a clear game plan for our football club and just steers the ship in the right manner moving forward, I think the football club can move forward and make some good strides, start getting better people in at the top, start pushing this club in the right direction. The next few weeks are going to be critical to Everton Football Club and hopefully there is a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. We can get the right people in. If we get the right people in, then... This club could pop. We know that. We know we're waiting to move forward. So it's going to be huge that throughout the summer. And third and final thing is the supporters, again, have been absolutely tremendous. What a horrible, horrible season. I've got to say, it's the, been the worst season that I've ever experienced covering Everton Football Club, but certainly following Everton Football Club as a fan. Honestly, I've seen Everton have some struggles, don't get me wrong. I've seen us play some terrible football in my time. The last two seasons have been difficult with worry. But this season had it all. It had it all. It had uncertainty. It had ownership talks. It had two points deductions. It, it's had demonstrations we've had to do. It's been four, three, four months without winning a game. And when you roll that all together on top of the previous two seasons, for me, it's been the least enjoyable season I can I've ever had support in Everton Football Club. It's been terrible. There's been administration where there's been muttered a million times this season. We've heard people telling us it's a good idea. We've had Matthews writing stories, it seems, every 36 hours about us sticking the knife in, as well as other people. Journalists have loved to jump on it. Other fans have called us a cheat and a, a cheat and have ended up looking like right knobheads when their club's been done for Cheating, and let me be clear, nobody's cheated. You know, it, it's rules that aren't fit for purpose. The two point deductions, I don't accept. I think it's embarrassing that you are doing it. I think it's Zingari League level deducting points from teams in seasons. I think it's pathetic. I, think, I thought it was pathetic when Forrest got it as well. Not just us, it'll be pathetic if Leicester get it in the season. If they done, if it's concluded in the summer and you get one at the start, I don't agree with them. It shouldn't affect the team. But if it does, fair enough. But it has to be you start the season knowing where you are. There could be 12 asterisks apparently next season next to teams who've lost points with PSR. That's pathetic. And this is the season where the Premier League's been shown up for, for what it is. 
which is ran pathetically and, and trying to just look after a certain amount of clubs. But that aside, the fans have been steadfast. The fans have been brilliant. The 1878, the stuff they've done. Supporters away. Look at Arsenal today going down this, selling out at the end of the season. Evertonians have followed Everton all over the place, supported them, backed them, and have dragged the club at times right through this, this mess that we are in. And this is why us as a fan base deserve owners to come in and give us something back now. It needs, the club needs new people in. It does. I'm sorry. It does. It needs new voices, new eyes. It needs people to come in and start embracing our supporters properly. Stop being scared of Evertonians and start embracing them. And listen, we need people who are strong. Come in and if you're doing something, tell us you're doing it and get on with it. Don't be fearful that people will go on Twitter and whinge and moan because you'll, people go on Twitter and whinge and moan anyway. If you give out a thousand pounds to every Evertonian, you'd still get 10% on Twitter or 5% cry ass and it wasn't 2000. So you've got to just front that up. You've got to front that up. People will do it no matter what. People will moan no matter what you give them. The club cannot be terrified of our fan base. Go and involve the fan base. Get the fan base right behind you. And an ownership group that come in and realise that the fans are the best thing about this football club will get the best results. We'll kick on. We'll drag the football club forward. And we'll all benefit from that. But the fans, once again, tremendous this season, home and away. And um, we deserve better. And let's hope that you know, we were clear with a few games to go this season. Next season, it's got to be better. And I think if we can give the, the coaching, the manager and the coaching staff better resources, different resources, we're not going to be able to go out and spend 100 million, we know that. But we can spend some money, we can bring frees in, we can bring loans in. We can get the manager better tools and then let them get on with it. And if we do that and crack on with it and we've got a direction moving forward and people are clear with what the plan is, things will improve. So there you go. Listen, thank you everybody who took the time to listen to me rambling on this season. It means a lot. We really, really do appreciate it. We're looking for that 100,000. We're on the road to 100,000 subs. That'll be incredible. If you if you could drop a sub, that would be brilliant. Thank you very much. Hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment. But thanks to everybody who has took the time to listen comment and watch these videos so thank you so much have a fantastic summer we're here all summer anyway we're here every day so you know all your Everton news will be there but for people who just watch the match stuff thanks very much take it easy have a great summer see you later